You're watching 24-7 Live Culture. We are here on the USC campus where the release of Graciously Assertive has just came out. Dr. Yasmin put on a great event. We were able to see an amazing panel of women. You had an amazing event tonight. You talked about women empowerment. Everything that you said on the panel, I mean, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the type of person I would love to be a mentor, I mean, a mentee of. You know, you talked about the true essence of sisterhood. I love that. What inspired you to write your book? You know, this is actually my fifth book that I've written, and they all have been empower about empowerment of women and sisterhood and community because living this life, going through the journey of life alone is what makes people go into mental health issues or suicide or whatever it may be, and there's nothing like the power of community. And so that's what I do in my leadership programs. I bring community together. There's so many stories of transformation, and I thought it was time to have those stories published. I love that. So you had other ladies on your panel as well, and they're a part of your book as well. Yes. How did you navigate through that, and why did you choose them? I chose them because I believe that they really exuded graciousness, and I knew that they were assertive. To me, the balance, so many people think you can't be kind and be assertive. They think you've got to be a pushover or you've got to be a which with be, right? And that's not true. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to show examples of women who had the balance of both, who are in very powerful positions throughout the state, nationally, and can be kind and can be assertive. And so they were the perfect choice. Talk about your journey, how you got involved in the book. Yeah, so um, I'm the president and CEO for the Foundation for California Community Colleges, and Dr. Yasmin Davids has been on the board of directors for the foundation for almost the past decade. And so I've gotten to know Yasmin over the years. Um, I even had an opportunity to uh, do some kind of one on one coaching with her, which was amazing and transformational. And so I love, love, love the work that she does. And uh, she She's a person that you just, you can't say no to. So when she asked me to, to be a part of the book, first I was, I was honored. I was honored to be asked and, and of course wanted to support her in any way that I, that I can. And, and especially because she was the one that really helped me understand how to tell my story and own my story and turn my story into my superpower. And so I'm just really honored to be a part of this project. And she's written a, a, a beautiful book that I think will help so, so many women. One of the biggest policies that I focus on is domestic violence. I have about 25 bills on domestic violence. I'm a survivor. And I want to say something that people don't think about, if you would allow me. We always talk about domestic violence as a physical assault. And I always go to high schools and uh, junior highs, and I always say this. We have to shift the way we think of domestic violence. I passed a bill uh, in 2020, I believe it was uh, SB 1141 called Course of Control, before uh, physical assault meant domestic violence or intimate partner violence. Now, uh, victims can take course of control to court as supporting evidence. And let me tell you what that means. Young ladies and men, if anyone's taking your phone and going through your phone, that is course of control. If anyone's telling you how to dress, how to speak, what friends to hang out with, that is course of control. And I could almost assure you that that's the precursor to physical assault. So learn what domestic violence is. Do not let anyone tell you how to dress, how to speak, who to hang out with, because little by little, they want to isolate you from your friends and family, mm -hmm. because that's when the harm comes. So that's something that I'm very passionate about. I work with teens, and I want to keep saying, don't let anybody take your free will away. You should be in charge of you, nobody else. Got yeah, that? Yeah. So we I hope appreciate that, because yes. I know I've experienced domestic violence in my household, and I know Serena can speak on that. Yeah, so I'm a former NFL wife, and I speak on exactly the same um, topic that you talk about. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think it's just physical, but it's not. Domestic violence is financial, mental. It's so That's many right. components. So I'm excited to hear more about the bill that you passed in reference to that because a lot yeah. of people don't know. They just think it's the scars. But you can't go to the police and say, oh, my husband is, you know, mentally uh Abusing, abusing me, right? So well, um, let me just share now. Now you can. Now at least you can document because mm -hmm. it's psychological abuse, and I think you probably attest to this. Mm -hmm. You know, physical abuse bruises disappear in a few weeks, but the mental scars are 
are long lasting. So now you can document everything that they do, withhold basic necessities if they take your funding away, money, food. Um, I had an instance where a young lady was tied up for four days. Mm -hmm. uh, they wouldn't let her go to sleep. Mm -hmm. After four days, she was delirious, was doing inappropriate things. Then that was used against her. It's a form of control and manipulation. So mm -hmm. again, it's not just physical yes. and now it's law. Now it's also course of control. So if you have physical um, evidence and also uh, course of control evidence, that is the key. So document, document, and document. This was such an amazing event. One thing I took away from this is that you can be a boss as a woman, but you also can be kind at the same time. You're watching 24-7 Live Culture.